of course, uh, whiskey just pooped. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I said that word on the pod. I'm sweating. <laughs> um, of course she did that, like, your brand new house, like, welcome home. Like, I was just, like, making a statement about my dog in the backyard, but I didn't tell you that it was in the backyard. So I said I'll pick it up before <laughs> I'll pick it up before I leave. I and you just said okay. I was like, oh, cool, no worries. And then the next day I text, I text her and I said, hey, I forgot to pick it up. Um, I'll, <laughs> I'll come by later and pick it up. And she goes, no problem. What room is it in? <laughs> And I was like, are you out of your mind? It's in the backyard. Like, Hey, hey, everybody. This is Brie Bagwell, and this is my podcast, Only Vans, where I talk to my friends in my van. Because it's a, a very tempting revenue stream for us to dip our toes into by getting your feet wet getting our feet wet <laughs> we either got to put this part in that podcast or we got to say it again with Sarah you need to do a bloopers yeah bloopers roll <laughs> more coffee yeah wake me up I feel like Adam Hood and every time I see a video of Adam online he's just sipping his coffee Sipping his coffee mm -hmm. and being cool. Yeah, just being cool. He's the coolest. He's the coolest. Yeah, be like Adam. There needs to be a shirt that says, be more like Adam. He's so nice. He, like, listened to my record, and him and Brittany told me the songs yeah. that they liked off of it, and it was just really he's, nice. He's, like, he's a national treasure. That whole family. That whole family. Mm -hmm. Those kids. Get Edie out of here. He got the, the ketchup pillow. Oh, oh I didn't I wanted see that yet. To, We talked about that when I played with him at Sam's Burger Joint. And um, I was like, they each need a freaking ketchup <gasps> animal thing, stuffed uh -huh. animal. And they got it? Stuffed animal? Yeah, someone got it for them. Yeah. Yeah, are all stuffed animals stuffed animals regardless of their right. shape? That's an interesting thought. What a topic. That, <laughs> that's what this podcast is right about. Right circles around that. <laughs> stuffed animals. <laughs> and there are many different forms. Okay, we're going to really get started, Kyle. Do you watch South Park? Or have you seen some South I've Park? seen some of it. You know, I w it's kind of like George Lopez. You wake up in the middle of the night and then you watch like an episode yeah. or whatever because it's just playing. Um, but yeah, I have watched. Because we, we always say, hey, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. <laughs> Edit that out, Kyle. And he's like, I, I think he hates it, but he doesn't show it. <laughs> he's okay. just stoic about he's it. He's like, get, shut up. Let's do this <laughs> podcast, Kyle. Okay. <laughs> um, are you really ready? Okay. Well, I'm here with my friend, Juliana Rankin. I'm doing a podcast in my van yes. called Only Vans about whatever I want to talk about. And so mostly it's just um, weird things like how does it feel to look like a supermodel and sing like an angel? Is it a burden? Is it a giant burden? Oh, it's just so tough. You know? <laughs> You're just one of my favorites. I love you. I love you too. Thanks for coming on such You made me cry right notice. at the beginning. Oh my oh, God. I have much more nice things to say oh to you. God, I um, need it today. Buckle up, uh, metaphorically. You don't. We're not moving. You don't have to actually buckle up. But um, so I was thinking about what to talk to you about, and so you're like ten years younger than me, maybe eleven or twelve younger. No one's counting. No one's counting. We don't think about it. But I was thinking that you are in the the dating scene now at the same time mm -hmm. that I was when I was like really getting in the dating scene as a female musician, mm -hmm. which is like different than just dating. Yeah. For so many reasons. But I will say, when we talk about it, one thing that hasn't changed is that it's going to take, like, a really special man to date yeah. a female artist. It's so hard. I mean, I thought it was hard, you know, a few years ago when I got out of college and I was in college. And it's even harder now because we were talking about this earlier, being in the spotlight all the time or, you know, not necessarily the spotlight, but, you know, you always have the attention yeah. more than the guy does. So it takes, it takes a man to be able okay with standing in the background which is it's hard it is hard and it's like you kind of my mom always says you date who you're around mm -hmm. so when I first got in the scene I was like I'm not going to date a musician but it's mm -hmm. like really tough because you date the people that you see and the people you yeah. laugh with and yeah um so then you date somebody and then I feel like you're kind of like, well, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta yeah. ride this out for a little bit because <laughs> then they're, then people are just gonna think I'm just, <laughs> I'm just climbing this ladder, <laughs> right? And that's not the, yeah, intention at all. Well, it's hard too because, 
as a musician, you know, like you said, date who you're around and the people we're around, we connect with emotionally, Mm -hmm. which is not something you get right off the bat with other people when you're in the dating scene in the normal world, let alone the musician world. I mean, it's writing songs, it's intimate and things happen. Right. They do. They really do. Yeah, and but I'm glad I didn't follow my own advice because I was like a musician never again. Because now yeah. I have Paul, who's like oh blue eyes, oh blue eyes, who's just the best. I know. And our schedules really line up. Mm-hmm. So when I'm working, he's working, and when I'm home, he's home. And we have like Mondays and Tuesdays, like a, a couple would have Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah. So that's really nice. But it's just it took me a long time to find somebody that was okay with. I think people look at us and they're like oh I want to that would be fun mm-hmm. and the, it's like it looks like it'd be fun to date us but like actually in practice it's, it's really tough you're at a you're in a bar every yeah. night I know you are and some to some people that's like off-putting like Ugh, how do you think you're ever gonna find you know the love of your life in a bar and it's like well it, it's kind of my job to be in bars all the time mm. and you know it's possible but still it's hard yeah so it's what is garbage it's <laughs> <laughs> what I want to say <laughs> well <laughs> Oh no, I know. And <laughs> and what about like, are you on are you on dating apps? Yeah. So I that? I just redownloaded Hinge the other day. I haven't. I've never been a Tinder gal. That ain't that ain't my cup of tea. Right. 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 Yeah. Cup of tea. <laughs> um, but I did redownload Hinge for the first time in like two years, about two weeks ago, <laughs> and. I now remember why I haven't been on it. Literally, I was talking to. A, I mean, a grown man the other day, and he asked me if I had a Snapchat. I was like, mm, you're in your 30s. Like, I don't have a Snapchat. I have a 401k. So, yes, you know. girl. No, thank you. And a phone number. And, yeah. Right. And a phone number. You can contact me other than Snapchat and Instagram. What are you like, trying to hide with I that know. ghost? Exactly. I don't like that. Exactly. It's just like, what? We're already talking. Why would you? And then today he literally messaged me and he goes, "Hey, if you're bored, come up to Austin and let's get a drink." No, I'm not going all the way to Austin. Yeah. No, I'm here. I'm busy. I got things to do. I got podcasts to make. Right. Yeah. yeah that's exactly yeah. right. And I feel like we talk about like chivalry kind of being dead. Mm-hmm. Like how you said something like, uh, you know, what did you say something about a guy holding uh, holding a door for you? Oh yeah, like the bars on the floor these days because like <laughs> I I was. I realized I was getting excited, like, oh my god, he opened the door for me? Oh my god, he, like, <laughs> told me I looked nice? Like, wow, the bar really is on the floor. That should be, that's the bare minimum. Which is interesting, so. because I, I met a guy once that was, like, like not met a guy, like, met a guy, just heard a mm-hmm. guy say, why well, opened a door for a girl, and she was insulted, like, I can uh-huh. open my own door, yeah. and I don't doubt that that happened to him, yeah. but I still love a good door mm-hmm. open. Yeah, it's nice. You want to carry my stuff? Get Go here. Go for it. Get, I know. Here's the guitar. Ugh. Like, I think that's all so great. Yeah. For a while there, I was like, you know, craftsmen carry their own tools kind of thing. I'm like, nope, you can take it. Sure. Love you. Right. Yeah. So we go through these weird phases and guys are probably mm-hmm. like, what do you want? Like, yeah. I don't know what you want anymore. Yeah. So now I'm just on these apps and I yeah. don't know. And with those, it's just everyone's looking for the next best thing. Yeah. So like, like, what else is out there, though? Oh, I match with this girl. She's cool. Or this guy. But what's on that next that slide right one time old band member not current mm-hmm. old band member he he was he gave me his phone because I was like what is Tinder how does this work so he gave me his Tinder app or whatever and I was like she's cute so mm-hmm. I did a swipe well I went the wrong way because I don't know oh, yeah. I'm, I don't left. know which one is correct yeah. well now right is right, right I get it right. but which way <laughs> anyway too much for my brain mm-hmm. I went the wrong way and I was like oh I'll just go back and undo it and he was like no she's gone forever I'm like what is this is the dumbest thing I've ever <laughs> like you can't even go up to a girl again and be like, sorry, that was a dumb pickup line. Like, yeah. can I try again? I would find that endearing. Instead, I, like, moved my thumb the wrong direction and perhaps ruined his life. Yeah. Like, that's uh, that's super weird. So what is the difference in Hinge? Hinge is, like, oh, let's see. You can just, like, like somebody. I think there's, like, a heart button or something. Oh, I was going to show you this. Oh, show me I something. I have two wild Hinge stories. Well, one's not really wild. We're going just off the hinges. Morning. I don't know. Oh, that, that would wasn't be another my best good work. Hinge podcast <laughs> off the hinge. <laughs> so I, I this morning I look and his name is like backslash underscore O U I. I was like, hmm, that looks a little weird. Like we? Like we, yeah. Maybe it's like Louie. I don't know. Whatever. Oh. He comments one of my pictures. Wow, so beautiful. 
I work at a local conspiracy news outlet. Hit me up if you're ever interested in coffee slash beer and chat at Buzzmill or Pinballs. <sighs> I'm sorry. A conspiracy. What? I, there's so much to unpack in that message. So much. <laughs> <laughs> Want to get a beer and talk about conspiracies? Yeah. I mean, honestly, that does sound kind of fun. But It sounds really interesting, but it also sounds like an Uber ride where your driver's like telling you. It doesn't yeah. sound like a date to me. Yeah. Wow, so beautiful. Yeah. I work at a conspiracy outlet. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, maybe, uh, I got a conspiracy theory know. about that. For real. Oh, so other wild hinge story. <laughs> So a couple years ago, I was in Vegas for a bachelorette party, and I was I think I was on Bumble at that time. Yeah, I was I had just graduated college, and this was like 2018, and I was on Bumble in Vegas for this bachelorette party, and I matched with this guy who was really cute. He was from um, Orange County, in California, and so anyways, like I think I just never responded to him because I was like I'm never gonna see this guy again, like never not going to talk to him and he was staying at the hotel like across the street from me and he was wanted to like meet up with us and I was like nah I'm here with bachelorette like never mind bye and so I never responded to him and he followed me on Instagram or whatever and so I think I followed him back we followed each other for a while like a year and I'm pretty sure I just unfollowed him because like never going to meet this person he moves to Austin <laughs> we match on hinge and like one of his pictures is still the same and I was like I know. I'm having deja vu. I know this person. Right. He messages me and was like, oh my gosh, Juliana from Vegas? Immediately. I was like, Brandon? It's Brandon if you're watching this. I was going to say, we don't have to name names. There he is. Yeah, there he is. I don't care. That's fine. Yeah, he was really cool. Nice guy. We're still friends. We talk about Peaky Blinders all the time. He moved back to California. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he was really cool. That is random. Yeah. It's, it's so strange, too, how it's like geo-targeted or mm-hmm. whatever. Um I just know success stories and I know horror stories. Mm-hmm. So I just, like I just can't imagine other. like, you know, where, where you date or where you find people anymore. But I do feel like people at grocery stores are always just like putting out that vibe. Like I always feel like guys at grocery stores are like I hear strolling, that. you know? I, and you know, I need to stop doing curbside. Get off the curbside, get in the store. In the store, three aisles. Yeah. Putting in that work. Last time I was there, Paul's like, did a guy talk to you? I'm like, yeah, I'm just in the wine section by myself, just looking at the wine. He's like, oh, you like wine? I'm like, no. No, no. I'm just browsing. I'm buying this for my <laughs> boyfriend. Thank yeah, you. see, also, now if I do that, I need to remember to not look like a toad when I go. Because, oh, like, it'll be, like, no, I t- I towed it up and it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm towed up. <laughs> I'm towed up all the time, and it doesn't seem to matter. So we'll switch all curbside. You okay. go in. I'll go to the stores. I'll get those digits. Yeah, in the, you know, in the, get those wine aisle digits. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is uh, now a, a dating advice podcast from somebody who hasn't dated <laughs> yeah, in exactly. years and years. <laughs> I don't don't listen to anything I say. I can't imagine like uh, Paul being in the dating world right? now. Oh. He's a dinosaur, you know? I, well, well, what is he, like 39, 40? He turns 40 next year. Oh, oh whoops, he's right. going to kill me for putting this on here. Oh, he turns sorry, thir- 37 again. Yeah, he's, he's 29. <laughs> Forever young. <laughs> he's hot. Don't matter. We love you, Paul. Um, but I, speaking of Paul, I had a show. Wait, I had no show the other night when he had a show. Mm-hmm. And it made me realize something so crazy because I was like, he got off stage an hour ago. Mm-hmm. Like, wh- why isn't he texting me yet? Like, I did the yeah. whole thing that is behavior that I do not condone and do not put up with yeah. from my person that I'm dating. Because yeah. you know how it is. You get off stage and you don't have a minute. I know. But being the other person in the relationship, yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, you know, thank goodness for my great band wives and girlfriends that like put up yeah. with that all the time because it is like really tough I know it sucks when you have to like you know control your own thoughts and be like oh I'm I'm acting like a little bit of a hypocrite right now right because like I know like when I get off stage I am a recluse I need like 15 minutes in a corner by myself yeah and I don't want to talk to anybody so yeah I've definitely had those text messages it's like well you finished like an hour ago where are you right and it's like well I'm sorry I'm just and you yeah. don't even get those 15 minutes all the time. So it know. would be in an ideal world. Yeah. Like we had that the other night too, where like yeah. I had nowhere to go. And then you're just like, then you don't feel like you can even give the people like 
a good version of yourself because you're so frazzled and if you just could have those 10 minutes like to wind down also it's like really healthy for your voice apparently to Mm -hmm. not talk for to do a cool down oh really which i've never done once no which is maybe why i talk like this oh no i'm always flapping every time i get off stage (laughs) (laughs) and it's just like they're like blackout conversations because i'm so just emotionally done for like those first few minutes that's when i collect myself i'm good yeah but yeah that's true i was telling paul that the other day like you can have a whole conversation where you're nodding Mm -hmm. responding Mm -hmm. and smiling and not be present yeah like you mean blackout in the sense of not blackout drunk just like not present just not there yeah Yeah. mentally that's very strange yeah but it's so true it's so true so are you like looking actively for a man or are you just like kind of like what's your i mean can we auction you off on this podcast why not listen That'll be, should we name a price? I just think it's That's strange because the amount of single, successful, smart, beautiful yeah. girlfriends that I have yeah. versus single, successful, smart, like available dude, like it's yeah. just such an imbalance. Yeah, I know. It's wild. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm like actively looking to get in a relationship and get married tomorrow, right. but it'd be nice to have someone around, you know? Like the same person. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I know. It'd be nice to, someone who I can have a guarantee to carry my guitar out <laughs> yeah. something like that but no yeah it, I mean it'd be nice but some some guy asked me that the other day on on hinge back to that and he was like so what are you looking for and I was like I mean I'm not saying I want to get married tomorrow but you know it'd be nice to ha- uh, yeah a pal or right some kind of a friendship relationship but it doesn't have to be uber serious yeah but. and I feel like everyone is just not committing because of the unlimited mm-hmm. options on your it's cell everywhere. phone. Instagram, it just ruins all of it. I, as much as social media plays such a huge part in our careers, like I hate it. Like it's it's so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Because you're so judged all the time. Well, immediately, like this one guy was like, "Mind if I check out your Instagram?" <laughs> like, okay, you don't believe what I put on these pictures? It's right. just. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. It's the worst. It is the mm. worst. But it's just going to be fine. Yeah. I tried to do it the organic way. What's the organic way? Going to church? Well, <laughs> maybe I should try that too. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, church, grocery stores, um, where else? Do you have a dog? You need to go walk a no, dog I need in to get the a dog. park. I need to get a dog. Apparently the dog's whiskey. park at <laughs> any time. She's not much of a walker, <laughs> if you can tell by the fact that she's like dead <laughs> she's asleep right now. Out. <laughs> Sitting up, passed out. Um, you can carry her around the grocery store. Oh, Maybe that's a real dude it. magnet. Yeah, uh, I need like a golden retriever or something like that. Yeah, I feel like a big dog. Yeah, like a big golden retriever named like Jake or something. That screams like I don't need a man, but if you yeah. want, like, like me and my mm-hmm. cool dog. Yeah, you can come We're here. with us. You can walk with us. Yeah, you own sure. your own house now. Can you tell me? Hold on, I have to take a get a tea break yeah tea break can you tell me what it's like to own your own house it is it's so i just moved in like almost a month ago um and it's great so far i love it it's crazy how when i was living in apartment life like i just i didn't care as much it's like oh gosh yeah i need to do that today to keep this place you know tidied up but i guess it just like I had so much other stuff going on and it wasn't something that I owned. Now I just have that much more pride in it. So it's like, I spent all day yesterday cleaning it. It's spotless and I want to entertain. I never wanted to in my apartment, but it's cool. So far I haven't run into any, you know, weird that are bad house things. <laughs> Except for me the other day when I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if we should talk about this. It's not even that funny, but <laughs> I think it's funny. It was hysterical. Cause I was like, it's mortifying to me. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Juliana's for wine night for her housewarming wine night with all the girls. And I took my dog to the backyard immediately so she could go to the bathroom. And then, like, I came back in and I was like, of course, uh, whiskey just pooped. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I said that word on the pod. I'm sweating. Um, of course she did that, like, your brand new house, like, welcome home. Like, I was just, like, making a statement about my dog in the backyard, but I didn't tell you that it was in the backyard. So I said, I'll pick it up before, <laughs> I'll pick it up before I leave. I and you just said, okay. I was like, oh, cool, no worries. 
And then the next day I text I text her and I said, hey, I forgot to pick it up. Um, I'll, <laughs> I'll come by later and pick it up. And she goes, no problem. What room is it in? <laughs> And I was like, are you out of your mind? It's in the backyard. Like, I would not leave it in your, ha- like, in your house. But you're so cool that you were just like, whatever, man. It's cool. That's so it's nice. Just, it's just a little teeny tiny dog doo-doo. Yeah, but I would, ne- I would never. I was mortified. I was like, you, you had a whole wine night with me where your face was just like, oh like if God. that was you and it was my house, I'd be like, get that out of my bedroom. <laughs> Someone's going to step in it. You were just so nice. Anyway. And it's a beautiful uh, house, so thank you. I, I would, do love it. I so <laughs> I was walking through my neighborhood like the other day, um, and I passed my sweet neighbors. They brought me like little things of jam from that they grow grapes in their backyard, and they brought me Mustang grape jam the other day, <laughs> right before y'all got there. And then I saw her. She's like two doors down from me. I was walking, and she was watering their yard, and because it was like our watering day, and. <laughs> The yard was, you know, most yards are brown these days. They're they're pretty not great. It's been 175. And I, this was just like such a dad thing of me to say. I just brought off the bat. Oh, your yard looks nice. <laughs> it didn't. It was fried. <laughs> and she was watering. And that's all I could think to say right. was your yard looks nice. Yeah. And she's like, oh, thanks. That's your new neighbor. She's like, oh, no, it doesn't. But <laughs> I know, new neighbor. And I just put my foot in my mouth. Like, That's fine. She probably thought it was a backhanded compliment. Right. She's like, oh, this girl. This is. Oh, yeah. watering your yard? Yeah. <laughs> well, I know. We have, uh, at least you don't. I mean, I share a wall with our neighbors. That's true. And so that gets really interesting. Yeah. Um, I sing. I, co- I talk to my dog constantly. Yeah. I cuss loudly mm-hmm. when I have a bad day <laughs> yeah. and I just can't only imagine what they think about me oh the walls in my old apartment were so thin so th- I mean paper how do so people get I, away with that I don't know because it's you look at it and it's like a big industrial brick building but I mean I don't know if the sound just bounced off the concrete everywhere because it was so loud I mean the month before I moved out someone else moved in above me and he put together like a five piece band of just himself every single day. <laughs> I mean, I could hear bass, I could hear keys, drums, and it's and it was not pleasant. <sighs> I was like, you know, don't be so judgmental. You had to work on your craft too. Oh, but it was bad. It was bad. Yeah. That would, it was just like it, the, the most worst. inconvenient times, like right either right as you're going to sleep or at like ten in the morning when you're still not fully woken up trying to enjoy your coffee and it's just like oh I was not wanting to hear heavy metal today you know (laughs) it's just why is it always heavy metal heavy metal yeah just double bass in your face oh yeah it is weird that's partly why I moved from Austin because Mm -hmm. where I was living I was paying more than I'm paying here by a lot yeah and it was the worst quality oh, yeah. of buildings. It's like the people that are building apartment buildings. Yeah. They don't even they don't know how bad they are on their yeah. yachts when they're having a great time. Exactly. And we're listening to, you know, heavy metal. Heavy metal in bed. And oh, right. that place that place had an ant problem. The management was rude. Oh, it was so bad. Great. So, so bad. now you have your own house. And my rent was seventeen hundred dollars a month. That's right. Yeah. How are you ever supposed to get out of the renting cycle exactly. when it's just insane? Yeah. <sighs> Should we talk about music? No. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. You've been playing some shows, I saw. Yeah. Yeah, what? I'm opening for Robert O'Keefe on September <gasps> 2nd. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I hate that's the best. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So I don't know if this podcast will be out by then. It yeah. might be out in 2028. We're not Who sure. Knows? You know, when um, we look back in time, it'll be like a time capsule. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> This is my death wish yeah. that the podcast gets released. I'm 101, and I just want one more thing. That's it. Just put her out. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of at the point in my career where I'm like, I'm just gonna do, it's too fun things. Everything. Yeah, all and the things. Why not? My tour manager has the capability to yeah. do these kinds of things, so yeah. I'm like, sure. So here we are should in we my van. Should we do a cooking show? Oh. Do I, I probably should learn to cook first? <laughs> no, I'm just. Kidding. Um, I like you just cook. make that one dip over and over. That oh, that was a good dip. <laughs> great. Thank you. That's a Martha Stewart re- recipe. Yeah. And uh, yeah, That's but you're really a great cook. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I'm just saying, you. like, you don't need an app. You sing good. You're hot. You cook good. You're smart. You're funny. I'll just date myself. Date yourself. You <laughs> <laughs> or clone yourself. 
<laughs> there's the solution. Uh, Done. We would never fight. <laughs> right. We might fight like, all the what? time. You're right about that. Yeah. You're right. And you're real hot. <laughs> okay, let me see what else I want to talk about. Uh, nothing. I think that was all the things that I all had on my list. Um, but you said something yeah. today about what? What was your quote? There's too many. <laughs> oh, we we're talking about dating <laughs> musicians, and you know, as far as the legwork that I've done, lots of them have too many pots on the stove, <laughs> and they are boiling it over. <laughs> I thought that was great. I'm like, I'm going to use too many pots on the stove, on the stove. from now on. And well, the thing is, is like some of them are up front and open about like, yo, I've got 10 girlfriends like, right. all over the country. So if you want to be number 11, you're welcome to. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, mm, I'm good. Did you tell them? Because I thought my first thought when you said that was like, you, Julian Rankin, you are a crock pot. You are a different type of pot. <laughs> You're the you're the pot that's superior. I'm that leg crusade Dutch oven. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. Don't you forget it. Um, and I'm so proud oh. of your songwriting. You write songs like you're Thank 75 you. years old. Thank you. It's strange. My mom says I'm an old soul. You yes. are an old soul. <laughs> and I'm just happy you're sharing it with the world. And you have it's fun. Do you are you releasing all the songs you recorded as a record or? So we go in on August 29th um, at Yellow Dog mm. in Wimberley with Adam Oder, mm-hmm. and um, it's going to be me and Bob Driver and George Talbert, Jeff Queen, um, Dang. Dave Percival is going to play on it. I'm sure Adam will do some things too. Um, but yeah, I just did those three with Bob and Paul Rogers here in town. And then we're going to do, I think, three or four more, and then we'll do three singles and then put out an EP. So. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's so things exciting. Things to come. On the you road. have so many big things on your horizon. There's a lot going on. Well, that week, I record on August 29th, and then I open for Robert O'Kean on the 2nd, and then that Saturday, I fly to Bahamas for a week. So, I'm sorry, what? Why? Yeah. We're doing family vacay. <gasps> and Am I a member of your family? Do I come? I mean... <laughs> I just forgot. Am I? <laughs> Got am my I own room this time. They're like, eh, she's 27 or almost 27. She should get her own room. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe you'll have your meet cute there. Hey. You never I know. Go. I mean, if I'm going to meet anybody, I'll meet him in the Bahamas. No, you better come back. You have to come yeah. back. Because moving to New Braunfels was, like, I knew I had a lot of friends here, but, like, you and I weren't friends until yeah. I moved here. Yeah. And then immediately everyone was like, you have to meet this girl. You have to meet this girl. And I was like, cool. Love girls. Like, can't wait girl singers are my favorite yeah. and then immediately it was like now you're stuck with me I know together forever now we're best is for the rest is. and I'm gonna try <laughs> to talk you into staying and writing a song with me yeah I'm done if you want of course okay. I'll never leave oh. you'll have to ask me to leave you you never have to leave <laughs> and my Sorry, dog, Paul, my, dog will, my dog will go to the bathroom in my backyard <laughs> today so don't you worry about it wait do you do you pick it up in your backyard no <laughs> Uh, but she also doesn't like to go in the backyard. She likes to go to the P-A-R-K. Oh, yeah. And that's where she goes. So we go every single day. Yeah. Rain that's or shine her, or hot or cold. A special treat. She knows. And oh, she's so it cute. also keeps me, you know, I walk a little yeah. bit. I count it as exercise. I know. That's what I miss about living in my apartment is I lived right there. So, <sighs> yeah, it was nice. Well, now I'm just going to come over to your new house all the time. And I can't wait to hear the new stuff you do with Adam thank but the stuff I've heard that you've already recorded is like ridiculous well thank you it's so good I like them I'm so proud of you thank you do you have any special gems of advice for any uh, mm. female singer besides choose hinge over tinder oh yeah that's one <laughs> or just don't do it <laughs> just date yourself <laughs> date, that's it date yourself just date yourself for a while uh, don't take crap from anybody yeah. Yeah. Well, you're a great player and a great singer and a great writer. And that's what I always say about like females that want to be in the scene. I'm like, you, you kind of yeah. like to get, you ha- kind of have to be a lot better at a, yeah. a lot of things. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of judging in this industry. So you have thick skin. Yeah. Yeah. Thick skin. And then the thinnest skin to write yeah. songs. It's yeah. a paradox. But yeah. It's how do you do that? I mean, we're also figuring it out. I mean, we are. Yeah. And that's why we cry a lot. Yeah. I love cry it. And drink coffee right yeah i'm so glad you were here me too i love you you. check out juliana rankin we'll link it all cow cow link it all love y'all love you goodbye bye-bye